All right, so now that we've finished um, change of variables in two dimensions, uh, we can actually extend the concept of the Jacobian to three dimensions. So now um, we'll be converting from coordinates x comma y comma z to some coordinates u comma v comma w. And then we can write x as a function of u, v, and w. And y is a function of u, v, and w. And z is a function of u, v, and w. And we've seen this before. We've seen it, um, we've seen it with cylindrical coordinates, but that's a little bit boring because z is just um, z. Is just z. Um, so basically in, in cylindrical, uh, what's really happening is that w equals z. Um, so that maybe is less interesting, doesn't feel truly three-dimensional. That's a, a two-dimensional thing that's been promoted to three dimensions. Um, but uh, the, the thing that is truly three-dimensional is spherical coordinates. Um, and then instead of u, v, and w, we have um, rho, phi, and theta. And uh, we could write x, y, and z as functions of rho, phi, and theta. Um, and then we could calculate the Jacobian, which I haven't told you what that is yet. Uh, but we're actually going to do that, and we're going to figure out that um, that rho squared sine phi factor. Um, we'll do that in this video. So uh, Jacobian in three dimensions is a lot like Jacobian in two dimensions. You just um, take x along the first row and take the partial derivatives with respect to each of the new variables. And second row is y. Um, and third row is z. And determinant, um, so you might want to do it this way to look the same as everyone else, but determinant is actually a really resilient definition. And since uh, for now we're only taking the determinant of the Jacobian, if you uh, mess this up and put the x's in the columns, like one thing I had trouble with this, I could never remember if they went in the rows or the columns. But actually, if you, if you did it this way, which which is not technically how it's defined, um, the determinant is the same. Um, take the transpose of the matrix, the determinant is the same. So that's cool. Um, okay, and then uh, determinant of a three dimensional or a three by three matrix um, calculated the same way that we did the cross product, right? We we can go along the top row. Um, cross out each um, the row and column containing each entry and then calculate the two by two determinant. You can also go in any row or column, cross that out and calculate. Um, and they will alternate signs. Uh, the sign is always going to be, so if you're crossing out the, the entry i comma j, the entry in row i column j, um, then you're always going to be multiplying by negative 1 to the i plus j. Um, it won't matter here because we're taking absolute value of the determinant of the Jacobian. So as long as you alternate signs, you're good. Um, and you might have to multiply by a negative 1 at the end to um, make the answer non-negative. But um, if you actually want to calculate the determinant ever, um, those, are, those are the sign factors you multiply by. So for example, if I went down... Um, column two, this this would be the uh, row one column two entry. So that uh, when I when I took that entry, crossed out that row and column, I'd be taking this determinant multiplying by negative one because it's negative one to the one plus two, which is negative one to the three. Okay, um, that's just a few reminders on how to calculate determinant. I'm not sure how fresh that is for anyone in this class. Um, Okay, uh, so now let's do it. So um, so we're saying in three dimensions, the integral of something dx, dy, dz, I guess this is a summary before we do it, is the integral of same function, put it in new variables, we have a thing, and then du, dv, dw. And the thing, as before, is the determinant of the Jacobian. And the Jacobian is that matrix. OK, um, so let's look at the spherical coordinates. So we said we have rho, phi, and theta instead of x, y, z. And then we need formulas for x, y, and z in terms of rho, phi, and theta, which we have. So uh, rho, I actually re-derive this every time. I, I look in the, the x, y, z 
plane, and I think of phi as being that angle. So like that's pretty easy, right? I can drop a perpendicular and derive that, and then that length is rho. So z has to be rho cosine theta, cosine phi. And then if I drop the perpendicular to the xy plane, then we have to have rho sine phi. And then um, we resolve that. That shouldn't have gone all the way to the x-axis. And then we resolve that to the axes. And so um, I get, as usual, a cosine theta in the x and a sine theta in the y. That's familiar from polar coordinates. So um, if you don't remember, you can derive that in less than a minute. So that's cool. Um, OK, now I need to calculate the Jacobian. So I'm just going to write, um, you don't have to do this, but I'll write myself a little note. This is x, y, z, and I'm going to calculate derivatives, partial derivatives with respect to rho, phi, and theta. OK, so then my partial derivative of x with respect to rho is sine phi cosine theta. With respect to phi is rho cosine phi cosine theta. Everything else is a constant. And then with respect to theta, I'm going to leave myself a little bit more room, um, negative phi, uh, rho sine phi sine theta. Derivative of cosine is negative sine. OK, let's do the same thing for y. We get sine phi sine theta here. We get rho cosine phi sine theta. And then we get rho sine phi cosine theta. OK, then for z, we get um, cosine phi. We get negative rho sine phi. And then there's no theta in z, so we actually get 0 here for the partial derivative. OK, so the reason I said you could expand along any row and column is there's some pretty clear choices for what would be easier. I would either go third row or third column. Um, so let's do third row. I think that's going to be the easiest. So um, we'll take that entry, cross out the row and column. So uh, we're going to get, here, I'll just write determinant of Jacobian is um, cosine phi multiplied by the determinant of that 2 by 2 matrix. It's a little bit tough. So we get row squared. Let's see, sine phi, cosine phi, cosine squared theta. That's just those two multiplied. And then minus, but there's a negative there, so we actually get a plus rho squared, sine phi, cosine phi, sine squared theta. That's those other two multiplied. Okay. Cool, that's that term. Now I go back, I circle this one, cross out that row and column, and um, I need to alternate signs. So I went ahead and just made that a positive sign. That That is row three, column one. So th three plus one is four, negative one to the four is positive one. Okay, so good, I did that correctly. Now I get a, oh, what happened there? Um, now I get a minus sign. Uh, but then that entry is negative, so it's actually a plus. I get rho, sine, phi, and then I need to multiply by the determinant of that 2 by 2 matrix. Do this a little bit faster this time. This is rho, sine squared, phi, cosine squared, theta, minus negative again. There's a negative in one of those. Rho, sine squared, phi, sine squared, theta. And then I need a third term. But luckily, I have a zero here, so that's actually third term is plus zero. That's the whole determinant. And now we can probably clean this up a little bit. Let's see, I have a common factor in that first parenthesis of rho squared sine phi cosine phi. So if I take that out, I'm left with cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta, so that's one. So that whole first um, thing I need to multiply by a cosine phi on the outside. I have rho squared sine phi cosine squared phi. That's that whole first term. And then second term plus, uh, let's see what happens in this parenthesis. I can take out a common factor of rho sine squared phi. And again inside I'm left with cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta. So that, that's good. That's one. And then I just need to multiply by this thing on the outside. So I have rho squared now sine cubed phi. And then plus zero doesn't do anything. 
Okay, now I can take out a common factor of rho squared sine phi, and I'm left with cosine squared phi plus sine squared phi, and that's 1. So my determinant of my Jacobian is rho squared sine phi, which is exactly the thing I put when I integrate in spherical coordinates. So I have it written as uv w up there. Okay, so I'm going to write thing integrated with dx dy dz is new function with changed variables. I left this blank before. I had d rho, uh, not sine, d phi, d theta, and now I can fill it in with the Jacobian. goes here, rho squared sine phi, which you maybe have memorized at this point. Um, my dog is now playing with a squeaky ball. Um, but that is, um, that is how you find it with Jacobians.